People have been spiralizing food forever. Zucchini, potatoes, apples, and recently people have been spiraling out of control. Today, instead of carving a regular jack-o'-lantern, I'm gonna try to spiralize it. The first step is going to be removing the guts from the pumpkin. Typically, people will open up the top of the pumpkin and pull the guts through the stem side, but for this design, I'm actually gonna cut my hole in the bottom of the pumpkin and pull the guts through the base. This is because I want the top of the pumpkin with the stem to be fully intact so that I can have a better visual aesthetic for my spiral. The second step of this process is to sketch the spiral. To do this, I put my pumpkin on top of a lazy Susan and gently press the end of my permanent marker against the surface of the pumpkin. By slowly raising my arm, I draw a continuous spiral. Step three is to start carving the pumpkin. To do this, I put the pumpkin on its side and trace the lines I drew earlier with my handheld pumpkin saw. One problem I encountered while doing this was that the layers kept sliding off. To remedy this, I used toothpicks in between the layers to hold them in place. Once I had the bottom curvature finished, I was able to start working my way to the top. After that, it was smooth sailing as I spun it on my Lazy Susan and worked my way all the way until I reached the end. So I just finished all the carving onto this pumpkin and now it's time to take the toothpicks out of the bottom and see if it acts like a slinky like I'm hoping it will. So let's see if I could carefully tip this over and get to the toothpicks on the bottom. And it looks like it's gonna be working out so far. I just need to be very careful and slide all of these out without accidentally snapping the spiral. Now I just need to get it back up. Okay, I think it should be good to go now. Now we have all of that taken care of, let's see what it can start to look like. Okay, it's kind of heavy so I don't wanna to do too much, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. Just like anybody else, this pumpkin needs a good support system. In order to create the gravity-defying illusion, I was going to use toothpicks. On my first attempt, I was using one toothpick at each contact point. However, I quickly realized this was unstable and the layers kept tipping and falling over each other. To fix this problem, I used two toothpicks at each point in a triangle shape, sort of like the trusses you see on a bridge. This provided a much more stable and sturdy structure and allowed me to support the whole weight of the pumpkin as I built the tower up. As I got to the halfway point, I was getting really excited about how my pumpkin was turning out despite what my very focused and concentrated face may be showing otherwise. I kept placing each set of toothpicks very carefully in order to not throw off the balance of the spiral. As I got towards the bottom of the pumpkin, I could tell how each layer had to support more and more weight. In order to avoid my spiral from collapsing in on itself, I decided to leave the last few rings alone. And here's a progress shot of what it's looking like right now. And one thing I noticed was that it looked like there was a lot of stringy guts hanging in between each layer. So I just went in with some scissors in order to clean it up and make it all nice and tidy. And with that final step complete, it's time to wait for the sun to go down and see what it looks like all lit up. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed watching me carve this spiral pumpkin, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel.